Good morning and welcome to Live from Currituck Extension. I'm Olivia and I'm going to be showing you guys how to use the Instant Pot today um, on this episode of Live from Currituck Extension. Uh, before we get started, I just have a few uh, things I wanted to remind you of. Don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel so you get notifications. Oh, we're dinging. Um, of when we're going live. If you ring the bell, you'll get those notifications in your inbox. Um, and um, our Instant Pot's telling us that we're done. So um, before we get going into that, just remember, like us if you like our content. There's a um, evaluation in the description if you um, want to give us a little feedback about what you see on our um, channel if you'd like to see something else i know this um, instant pot was something that was recommended so i hope you guys enjoy i'm not going to cook for you guys today i'm going to just show you the ins and outs of using the instant pot but i do have um, some of my favorite recipes linked in the description you're more than welcome to try those out um, so let's talk about uh, the instant pot so my Instant Pot just dinged as I was doing my intro, and um, that means that it's, you can see the, I don't know if you guys can see this digital screen here, it's moved over to the leave warm setting, so that's what the, um, or keep warm setting, which is what the L uh, stands for, and it will start to count up from one. So when you set it, it counts down from the number that you set it at and then it'll start to count up when it moves over to the leaf warm setting. So the very first thing I wanted to show you guys before we get started is um, probably what scares everybody the most is how to release the steam. So I'm just going to turn my instant pot so you guys can see it. So this is the same for any electric pressure cooker. They're all going to have some sort of release valve. So I have um, a release valve right here, whether or not you can see. Um, Right there is my nice release valve and there's a locking mechanism. It's silver and it locks when there's any type of pressure in the pot. So that means that I can't open the lid right now. It is locked shut. And that is for my own safety because if I opened the lid, the amount of pressure would push the lid off. Um, so the scary part, we're gonna go ahead and release the steam. The release valve has a little thing that sticks out that you can use you know, your index finger or one finger to touch. Some people are afraid and use tongs or gloves or um, they make these little turner things too. You can just kind of knock it and the steam is coming out. I don't know if you guys can see the steam. There's not a lot of steam in here. Um, this is the, what I'm currently doing, I hope you can hear me over the steam, is the um, uh, boiling water or just the water test. Um, so super easy. If you're scared of your Instant Pot, this is a great way to learn how to use it. So just put some water in here. I think I added about two cups of water. You only need a cup of water to create enough steam to cook food. Um, some recipes, even a half a cup of liquid, and it doesn't actually have to be water. And I'll get into that a little bit later. But um, So we just need some type of liquid in our pot to create steam. I'm using water for this um, water test and um, I put it in there for four minutes. So it takes time to heat up to uh, the temperature where it's building pressure and for pressure to build up. And once the pressure builds up, your lock will engage. Once your lock engages, you know you're starting to build pressure. You can adjust from high and low pressure in most um, electric pressure cookers. And at that point, you'll start to, uh, to build up to the pressure that is right for the product that you're cooking or whatever you've set it for. Then once the time that you've set for that amount of pressure to be on, it will um, ding like it did earlier and move over to the keep warm setting. And then you can, there's a couple of different ways that, that you can release based on um, what you're cooking and your recipe. When you release the steam, which I've done, it just takes a minute, maybe two, um, you can open your pot, your lock will disengage. So you can turn, it makes this nice one um, sound. And I typically turn mine off at this point and we'll open it up woo, to a facial. So I have um, a PowerPoint that we're gonna go through and I've linked this PowerPoint 
in the description so you guys can follow along if you need to. I'm going to actually show you with my pot as well. So um, let's get right on to it. So what is pressure cooking? So, you know, that is probably something that I get a lot. So what is that? What is why pressure, especially in canning? So when you're cooking with a pressure cooker, what you're essentially doing is bringing the temperature of boiling water up higher or bringing um, the temperature of the water up higher than it can get with boiling water. And you're also trapping the steam in the pot and making more at the same time. So what you're doing is creating a cycle of pressure. And water is such a great way to cook food because it's very efficient in its transfer of energy. So unlike air, water can transfer energy and heat up faster. And so what we're doing is we're just creating a um, environment where that water is trapped. And what it's doing is kind of making pressure against the product and pushing the energy in and cooking the food faster. Why is that important? Well, it's efficient, like energy wise. So we're just heating up this small appliance um, for a shorter period of time, unlike the oven for 45 minutes or um, it also nutrient wise, it retains more nutrient because we're using less water than say boiling. So if you're boiling food, you're, you're basically letting the nutrients uh, seep into that water. And we typically don't eat the water that we boil food in. So we're losing some of that nutrients. We're actually just pouring it down the drain. So this is a great way to keep the nutrients in the food. We're not cooking it for as long and with as much water. All right. So that's kind of, um, pressure cooking in a really quick tidbit, one slide. Okay. <laughs> so what are the different parts of the pressure cooker and what do you need to know um, to make sure that you are safe with your pressure cooker? Simple things. You've got an inner pot. My inner pot's hot because I just used it, but this inner pot, it's silver and it comes out so that you can throw it in the um, dishwasher. You can wash it. You cannot cook without an inner pot. There is a heating element underneath the inner pot that um, will ruin if you cook directly into the pot. After that, the next things you need to know are the lid. The lid has a huge number of important things, beginning with the silicone ring. So all pressure cookers, canners, whether they're electric or not, are gonna have these silicone rings. So this silicone ring is important to trapping in steam. You want to make sure that that steam's trapped, otherwise you're not going to build pressure. So if you don't use your ring, so if you take it out and then maybe you forget to put it back in before you cook the next time, um, you will not build up the steam. It won't trap, be able to trap in there. So all pressure cookers of any type, whether it's electric or stovetop, will have some type of ring. Um, these rings you can buy, you probably should buy more than one because they tend to smell or start to smell like whatever you cook the most. Um, we cook a lot of spicy food, so ours typically smells pretty spicy. And if at any point I wanted to cook a dessert in here, then the dessert might also kind of have that spicy smell or taste to it because it's in the ring. So the rings do start to smell like whatever you cook. doesn't mean they're not clean. It just is part of, um, the appliance. And you can get more, you can get replacements. They have them in different colors. So you know which ones are savory and which ones are sweet. Um, all of those things you can get online or um, at whatever store maybe sells an, an instant pot that you or electric pressure cooker that you're using. So a lot of people recommend having more than one of these. And then from the ring, we have these two little pieces here on the lid. So this is going to be your lock or your float valve. And what it does is when pressure builds up, it pushes out. Okay. And at that point, there is this little lock thing here that will kick in and it will not let you open the pot. So there's this little bitty mechanism over here that will lock so that the pot lid will not move. So that's your very first measure of safety. And that um, engages whenever a sufficient amount of pressure has been built up inside your instant pot or your electric pressure cooker. The next thing is this little shield. It goes over your release valve. This thing 
you need to remove periodically and clean because this what this does is keeps food from um, coming up through your release valve and then going into this little plastic piece here, which also just comes right off this little plastic piece. It comes right off and you'll need to clean this out and make sure that there's no food stuck in here. So the horror stories about um, pressure cookers are often because food is stuck in these two valves. And so pressure is building up to higher than what people, you know, what is recommended, what people would recommend in recipes. Um, so with the, the electric pressure cooker, what makes it so much better is you set the pressure. And if something goes wrong, the pressure cooker is going to cut itself off. It's not, um, so it's not relying on us to um, watch it fully. There's nothing really scary about these things. They're completely programmable. You just need to hit the buttons and then, you know, I typically just kind of leave mine running in the kitchen while I'm doing something else. So I do not have this. I looked all over and I'm pretty sure I threw mine away. I don't um, use this particular thing, but it is called a um, condenser cup and it goes right here. It goes, it clips in right here. It's like a little semicircle little cup and it clips in and there's a hole in the rim. This is cool enough now I can take it out. There's a hole in the rim here. There's that little hole right there. There's a little hole right here you might not be able to see, but that's where um, your condensation will drip down into your condenser cup. Your condenser cup will then fill up with water and you have to clean that. And I'm not into cleaning a lot of pieces, so I don't typically use that. It's great for when you're doing stews. And of course, you'll notice that the steam will build up here. And I put my lid in the handle. Um, most, I don't know that, I'm pretty sure I was proven wrong. Not all uh, Instant Pots have these little handles on the side but they are for the lid to sit down in or they are made so that you can put the lid down in there. And that way you, it will condense down the lid into the ring around the ring into the condenser cup. It's another piece. And if you have it, just remember to clean it. I'll show you why. Let's see. Whoops. And so moving on to settings. Oh, I did want to show you guys the inside of the Instant Pot, and then I have a little few accessories I'll show you at the end. But this is going to be your um, heating element down there in the bottom. You want to just make sure that you wipe that with a paper towel periodically and do not put food directly in there. So how do you set your Instant Pot or your electric pressure cooker? Well, that's a really good question because they have so many buttons. Um, let me show you how to put the ring in before we get started because I want you guys to see that. Put the, the little ring, it slips behind this bar and you want to push it in all the way around. Make sure it's nice and down in there. Once it's in the, once you put it in there, you get these fun noises. And it makes this noise when you're ready to go. And now it's telling me it's off, but we can go ahead and start with um, our settings. So there are all these settings down the side. They're pre-programmed. So if I were to hit this rice button, it's programmed for 12 minutes. However, I can adjust the pressure by hitting the pressure button from low to high. This is just something you have to look at your recipe. And whatever your recipe says, that's what you should use. Um, there really is, there's no difference between um, if I were to hit this rice button or if I were to hit this manual button and do the same thing, high pressure for 12 minutes. But you, it, I'm pretty sure there is a way to adjust the time settings, but on mine, I have not been able to. So I always go to the manual button and then just put the pressure in that I want. Um, so just say well, the last thing I did was six minutes of the for the boiling water. So that's going to come up first on high pressure. So you can adjust the pressure by hitting the pressure button and you can then adjust the time by hitting the plus or minus button. So there's also some other buttons down here and you're like, what are these 
this for? Okay, so um, saute. Every time you want to change, you have to hit the cancel button. We come back over here to saute. So this is going to go right to 30 minutes, and then there's a less, more, or normal. So you can hit the, um, wait a minute, you have to be adjust button um, to adjust the less, more, or normal. And then to adjust the time, you hit the plus or minus. So that's saute. You can saute right in here. So say you're cooking a chili. You can uh, brown your meat right in here on a saute setting. You know, of course, you'll take the lid off to do that. You can move the, the meat around. And then when you're ready to add your other ingredients, you go ahead, dump them in, put the lid on, put the pressure on. Super easy. All right, so there's a slow cooker setting too. So the slow cooker setting, again, you'll use this less more, less normal and more setting and adjust that with the adjust button here. So um, low and high, low, medium, high for a, a um, slow cooker. They make little pot lids. So you can put this lid on there. There's nothing wrong with that. Sometimes you'll build up a little pressure if you leave it on there and don't open it up periodically. So you can also get little pot lids or look through your cabinet and see what lid fits for um, cooking it as using it as slow cooker. Super helpful because um, then you're not building up pressure and you can look down in there and see what's going on because it's going to be in there for hours if you're using it as a slow cooker. Just another little thing you could add. Um, let's see. So we talked about that. All right, pressure release. So that's everyone's scary thing. The pressure release. There are a couple different ways that you'll find in Instant Pot recipes. This thing makes so much fun noises. Um, that uh, show you how to use how to release the pressure. And part of releasing pressure is part of the cooking time. So make sure that you follow the directions for the recipe that you're using. So they say there are two methods. There are actually three that are in typical Instant Pot um, or electro pressure cooker recipe books or recipes on the that you find, you know, on the Internet or that I use. So, oops, sorry, the um, natural pressure release, and that's denoted as NR in um, recipes. That means that the pressure is going to kind of dissipate on its own. And it's going to depend on the amount of product that you're cooking, as well as the time, you know, how long it's taking you to build up that pressure. This can take anywhere from 10 to 30 minutes. So that can feel like a really long time. Um, so this will keep the food intact because you're not like whoosh, releasing that pressure. And it's great for um, soups, things with lots of liquids. So the other one is a quick release, which is usually denoted as a QR in um, recipes. And this can take between one and two minutes. And that's what I did at the beginning of this, um, this stream. So you have um, that. So you can reference that as um, a quick release. It takes one, two minutes. And that it took us two minutes to get rid of that steam. It's not recommended for your high starch foods, um, rice, and um, potatoes and all this is doing is as soon as it goes over to the keep warm setting you go ahead and flip it from sealing to venting and um, the last one that that is not in this PowerPoint but sometimes is used in recipes is the QR10 um, or NR10 in our 10 or something like that. And what that means is after 10 minutes, you're going to release the pressure. And that's different depending upon what recipe you're using. So you just make sure you look at the recipes and it'll let you know um, what type to use. All right. So let's see what we have next. I think. Yes. So oops. safely removing the lid. Now, everyone gets really nervous about this, but I do want to you can wear gloves, it says wear heat gloves if you want to, or silicone gloves. You can, but this handle here is heat resistant, and this right here is hot. It does say don't touch it, and the sticker is really hard to remove. Um, but if you take the handle and you pick up the lid, you just want to open it away from your face. 
And that is how you safely remove the lid. It's simple, but sometimes people need to be reminded of that. Um, some other things, we don't recommend that you leave the house with the pressure cooker on. Um, you know, that it doesn't take long. Most foods in here will take under an hour. So you can come home from work and cook, get this started, and then in an hour have dinner, a full meal ready. Um, we also don't recommend that you fry or can in uh, electric pressure canners. There's just not enough research out there to support canning in electric pressure canners right now. Um, some other little safety tips, don't overfill. Your inner pot, it's going to have a max fill um, line right down in there. Make sure you listen to that. Um, and there are also um, a few other marks in there so you know exactly how much you're putting in there. And when you're looking, if you're pressure cooking food, you want to do two thirds full. All right. Because things are going to expand and you need room for steam. And if you're, you know, sometimes we do this as a slow cooker, you can fill it up to the max fill line. Uh, just remember that foods like beans and um, rice and stuff are going to expand because they're going to um, absorb that water while they're cooking. So they will grow taller. Just keep that in mind when you're cooking. All right. How to clean it. So you need, definitely want to make sure that you clean your instant pot regularly or your electric pressure cooker. The base, all of this here cannot go in the dishwasher, obviously. I don't even know how you would make it fit. Um, but wiping it down with a damp cloth is the best way to go. Sometimes on the outside, it'll get really sticky and I'll use, you know, some sort of um, light or mild detergent on the outside. The ring, you can use a craft brush to get around the ring or I just shove a paper towel and um, or a dishcloth and run it around the edge. Just wanna make sure you get some moisture out. Some of the other pieces like the inner pot, this can go in the dishwasher and then your basket. So this is your little steam basket or um, your rack. This can also go in the dishwasher. And this is great for steaming vegetables, making eggs, anything, um, any produce that you're going to put in that you're going to steam or um, sometimes I'll put like a whole spaghetti squash in. You want to put it off the bottom because it can, does have the tendency to burn if there's like a con the heating elements touching the bottom of the pot and then the bottom of the pot is touching your product. So you, um, you just want to have a little rack in there for that particular thing. And I didn't mention this little thing. This is a trivet that you buy separately, but this allows you to um, put meat on the bottom or vegetables on the bottom. Then you put this in and you can put a bowl of rice on the top so you can cook everything in one pot. Um, so it might be a good investment. It's one of the suggested items when you buy the Instant Pot. Um, here is a really interesting way to clean your pot. And, it, and when I say interesting, I mean, it's just helpful. Um, it, any pot similar to this one, if you have some hard water stains in it, ours definitely does, just a little bit of white vinegar is going with a damp sponge or um, and even some lemon to kind of get rid of that smell will really help clean out those hard water stains. You can see how um, in one pot there, it's rainbowed, and in the other pot, it's cleaned. <laughs> and then the lid. The lid can go in the top rack of the dishwasher. Yay! You can put this right in the dishwasher along with the ring. You want to take the ring out to clean it, and then periodically you're going to want to clean um, your, your valves. Make sure there's no food in there. Um... Yeah, and we just talked about that. And then I talked earlier about the rings. The rings do start to smell, and maybe you want to um, have a couple different rings. You do want to make sure that they dry completely. And then when you store this, make sure you put the lid upside down in the pot. Do not seal the pot because um, that will cause some smell. And then the condenser cup. I see Sherry Lynn, she said she doesn't use her condenser cup because it just falls off because it doesn't stay in. Um, you can break the clips on those and they'll fall off. Um, if you don't clean them, 
they can end up looking like um, what you see there on the screen, I guess it's over here for you guys. Um, and it can attract bugs. So just keep an eye on that. Make sure that you're cleaning that. And then, as I said, we don't recommend canning in um, electric pressure cookers just yet. So we just need a little bit more research to make sure that we can get the everything in the pot up to the correct temperature. So it's all about temperature in pressure cooking and pressure canning. It's all about um, getting the product up to a higher temperature than you can in a traditional boiling water bath, which would be, you know, even if you were to put your produce in a boiling water bath, we're going temperatures above boiling water. Um, it's just something you can't achieve without building that pressure. So you guys, I, that's all I have for you. If you have any questions and you're watching this live, you can type them in the um, chat box. I think it's over there. Um, remember this PowerPoint, which is over there, is um, in the uh, description. You can download it and review it yourself if you need to. I have some of my favorite recipes linked as well. Um, and let's see, is there anything else I was supposed to remind you of? Oh yeah, tomorrow, uh, don't forget to visit or to come back and watch Cameron Lowe's um, How to Manage Your Finances in Tight Times. But before you go, make sure you subscribe, ring the bell so you get notifications when we go live. And don't forget the um, evaluation. We really would love to hear what you guys want to see and let give us a little feedback about um, what is um, something that you would like or if we're doing a good job or, you know, any of that stuff. We really want to know what you, you want from us. And um, hopefully we can continue our streams. Um, yep. So if you need to contact me and you're watching this as a recording, you can visit our website and get my email address or my contact information, Olivia Patchell, and um, shoot me an email. I can shoot you some recipes. I can shoot you some um, little tips and tricks. But I, I do want to say that this is like quick and dirty of my like three hour instant pot class. So um, I am just trying to get you guys interested in this. And hopefully sooner or later we can have uh, an in-person instant pot class. And I hope to see you guys all there. Um, but don't forget tomorrow, 1130, Cameron Lowe is doing managing tight, managing finances in a tight time or keeping, you'll see, it's going to be great. Have a great rest of your day, guys.